uh, vegetable scraps are 15 to uh, 20 to 1. So we're using vegetable scraps, coffee grinds, cow manure, um, green biomass out of the ponds, which is moist and green, basically as our nitrogen source. We're using newspaper and um, dry grass and whatever else we can bundle in there through, uh, through the biomasses that we're going to cut around there as our carbon source. And, and how, what's, I appreciate you using layman's terms because I'm so new at this, but how are we differentiating? What's the difference between the compost and fertilizer then? Because you're adding manure to the compost, right? Is it still kind of the, is it a difference? Uh, well, uh, manure consists of basically nitrogen. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of other stuff in it when you're talking about cow manure. That's it's fertilizer. like if you looked at it on the numbers, it'd probably be a 21-0 or even a 20-0-0 as far as it's, it's got more nitrogen than it does um, anything else in it. It doesn't have a whole lot of potassium. So when you're talking about a fertilizer, you're talking about something that's balanced between nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And so, in, in Hawaii, our soil has a ton of phosphorus and a ton of potassium in it already. What, when you get a chemical analysis from the university and they're telling you to chemically farm, they're going to tell you just to add 20 which is a chemical nitrogen fertilizer, because um, that's all you really need in it. Then they're going to tell you to change the acidity by liming it and changing the pH so that you can make the phosphorus and the potassium available. In these fields, what's happened is that's what they've done again and again and again. They've dumped nitrogen in. They've uh, dumped phosphorus and potassium for what they couldn't get out of the soil, and then they changed the pH and recorrected it again several times to suck any of the minerals and the phosphorus and potassium that were here. So what's happened is this soil has been really abused. A lot of that stuff has been sucked out of it. So what do we want to do is we want to add that back into the soil. So when we're talking about fertilizers, fertilizers are something that will fertilize a plant, right? We're trying to fertilize the soil make fertile soil again. So if you think of the word fertilize, fertile, right. we're trying to actually do it with soil rather than a fertilizer itself. So if we bring life back into the soil and we have the worms cruising in it and we feed the worms and the worms feed the plants basically instead of us actually feeding the plants. You can look at a chemical fertilizer as kind of like mainlining the plant straight into its veins, whereas we're doing it a more holistic approach. And every time we grow something in the soil, we draw minerals up, we take what we need, the rest of it goes right back in. And with everything that we've grown, we're adding minerals and potassium and nitrogen and phosphorus to the soil, along with whatever the worms will bring up from deep that hasn't been touched by all this farming is going to replenish this soil and make it fertile in the way that it should be. I don't know, that's kind of a long-winded answer to that, but um, now there's a there's a difference here too. You're using uh, cow manure as a nitrogen in the compost pile, but that nitrogen that you're using in the compost pile is going to be interpreted through all the nitrogen you're throwing in there. It's no different than vegetable scraps or green grass. By the time it's composted, it's mostly just a nitrogen source in there, and whatever minerals and potassium and phosphorus in each ingredient that was in what you composted is actually going to create the whole fertilizer. So like we're throwing column and guy that has a ton of phosphorus in it, it has a ton of potassium and a ton of nitrogen. So that's going to actually come out into the numbers of that fertilizer when it's a, once it's a finished compost. So we're looking for like some sort of a balanced compost that's probably like an 888 or something right across the board even with everything in it. And those numbers are deceiving. Uh, just because the number is higher uh, in nitrogen or um, phosphorus or potassium, when it comes to organic, your numbers aren't that high because the plants assimilate them a different way. Where when you're using a chemical fertilizer, you can have a 20-20-20. It's different the way that the plant assimilates it. It could never assimilate those high numbers out of the soil, but yet it's not really needed because you can grow things way bigger organic if it's healthy than you can chemically anyway. So, um, yeah. Can chicken manure be substituted for horse manure? I was going to comment on that. Yeah, for sure. For I, was, I was always told as a boy growing up in the farms, you know, we had, you know, it was a farming area. We never paid for any kind of fertilizer manure or anything. You know, you wanted rolling it off. <clears throat> My father and grandfather always cautioned me, never apply chicken manure, raw chicken manure, directly to your garden. You'll burn your plants, you'll burn your vegetables. And I could not understand it. You could not explain it to me. I now find that chicken manure has the very highest percentage of nitrogen in any manure that you can get and actually requires to be they leached it where I came from. They set it out in the rain, let the, let the rain wash through it for about a season or something. But you must actually compost your chicken manure before you put it out into your vegetable garden. Or use it in really low uh, amounts. Very, yeah. Make it into teas. Worms love chicken manure. They'll actually eat right through it and make it into a really superior fertilizer. 
because they're adding all the micronutrients and all the minerals that they've dug up. They've eaten dirt and mixed it with it. So they're so going to compost it. Like they're going to compost it along with it. Yeah. But uh, chicken manure is really good. Anything, anything can be your nitrogen source when it comes to the compost pile. Uh, cow manure you can put directly in your garden, and your plants will assimilate the nitrogen right out of it. Try put coffee grounds in your garden. It's not going to work. Coffee grounds have a lot of nitrogen in them, but the way that they're set up, that nitrogen has to be composted to be available. Nitrogen, if it's still in the process of thermophallic, where it's heating up, in order for it to heat up, it makes itself unavailable to a plant. So when you think that you could just throw scraps in your vegetable garden, they're going to get rotten, they're going to get everything, and they're actually going to lock up nutrients in the soil because those nutrients are going to go to composting that. Where cow manure and chicken manure and the manures, for whatever reason, are a little different. And again, I don't have the background to totally fully understand why, but I know that um, when you add manure, the plants can feed directly off of it. But you can't add papaya peels and have them directly feed off of it. But the worms can eat those papaya peels, and when it's done, those plants can eat off of it that way. That's kind of Mother Nature's way. Um, okay. I can answer that about the chicken manure from uh, Acer, where it presently has two kinds of stock. One stinks like chicken manure, and I thought that was real McCoy, and the other one doesn't stink. But even on the one that stinks, you read on it, it says fully composted chicken manure. And you poke a hole in the bag, and this brown, crumbly, good looking compost comes out. It doesn't, doesn't resemble. In other words, it's not raw chicken manure, it's composted chicken manure. Yeah, well, because if you have uh, uncomposted chicken manure, it carries a lot of pathogens in it. And when you put it in a bag and it has no oxygen, it becomes anaerobic, which breeds pathogens. And when you talk about um, like what you hear in the E. coli and all these different things, this is another reason, this is kind of interesting why I'm doing this with fish here. There's been a new agricultural law passed where you're not allowed to use manure products on organic, on organic anything anymore unless it's composted. Anything from a warm-blooded animal, you cannot no longer use directly in your field. You can't take horse manure or cow manure that hasn't been composted and just use it in your field if you're selling vegetables. That's one of the laws they pass because of those E. coli scares. But guess what? Fish are cold-blooded. There's no pathogens. So fish nitrogen is one of the only things left that in this day and age with these new laws passed that we're going to be able to farm with and use directly as a manure uh, nitrogen fertilizer. So, because it doesn't carry the pathogens that warm-blooded animals do. So, it's kind of interesting. Um, and, okay. So, let's, uh, anybody else want to read it? You want to go back on that? Where, where, where are you? Up on top? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> I think the sentence actually starts on that. Although attaining a carbon-nitrogen ratio of roughly 30 to 1 is a useful goal in planning composting operations, this ratio may need to be adjusted according to the bioavailability of the materials in question. It's, it's like, like Eddie was saying, if you dump a certain thing directly under your plants, they're not available to the plants. It's, it's going to sit there and rot and do something other than what you intended. That's what the bioavailability refers to here according to the bioavailability of the materials in question. Most of the nitrogen in compostable materials is readily available. <clears throat> Some of the carbon, however, may be bound up in compounds that are highly resistant to bio... <clears throat> excuse me... <clears throat> highly... <clears throat> highly resistant to biological degradation. Newspaper, for example, is slower than other types of paper to break down because it is made up of cellulose fibers sheathed in lignin. So, so, excuse me for just a second, what does that mean? That means that you can add a lot more nitrogen to newspaper than you can to other composting materials, which makes it kind of unique because it's thin and it has a lot of surface area. Mm -hmm. They can get at it really easy. So once you start to really get that hot with a lot of nitrogen, you can use a higher nitrogen on it and it'll hold up. Like it's it. also good for the worms as well because it holds up longer. Mm -hmm. As they're bedding and they're eating in between it, it kind of holds up for the longer run a little bit and they eat it down really well. Okay, sorry, you can keep okay, going there. Just, wanna... just one thing, that they came up last, last night actually and kind of ties right into this. We're all talking about newspapers and everything. Don't a whole bunch of us in our workplace or at home have paper shredders? I can imagine just empty your paper shredder once in a while and bring it out here. Yeah, for sure. We want to keep out the magazine pages yeah. and certain credit card statements and stuff like that that may have uh, non-soy-based inks in them. 
Right. So that's something we want to pay attention to, but for about. sure, definitely trying to get everybody to save their newspaper for sure if they the have any sources. Of, like all your regular newspaper, bring it in. Based, I mean, it, uh, soy based. Soy based. All the newspaper yes. companies over here are all soy based. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so, cool. um, but not color. You don't want any color in it, right? Uh, even the color Maui Times and that's still a soy based ink. Really? Yeah. Great. Those guys 